Hello everyone and welcome to this, another episode of 2D Fundamentals. My name is Kasanas. Guys, in the last, I don't know how many episodes, we've been working really hard on the 12 principles of animation. And we've seen a bunch of really simple examples. We've been working with a very simple ball character, for the most part. Uh, we've been working with a really simple ball character, or a pendulum, or something like that, and really focusing on the 12 principles. We looked at that both th through theory as well as through practical in spine. Today, I'd like to take a move into more complex spine work. I'd like to take a look at rigging an actual biped character in spine. We're going to do this over two episodes. We're going to take a look at the idea of simply an FK character and building the rig structure. And in the next episode, we'll take a look at building ourselves a very simple IK structure. All right, guys, let's get started. So let's take a look at the character that I've actually created here. You guys will have your own character and that's perfectly fine. The ideas are going to be relatively the same. Whether or not you have individual pieces like I do or one piece, it's gonna slightly change on how you actually weight the character. But otherwise, guys, it's gonna be identical. So let's take a look at my character. It's a very, very simple biped character I've got. And uh, this character right now is all broken up into individual pieces. I brought it into spine like we've done everything else so far. I brought it into spine in exactly the same manner. Get off there. And right now, everything is broken up into individual pieces. Each piece of the arm, each piece of the, the pants, for example. I've got a crotch piece and each piece of this piece. That's all broken up into little tiny sections. Each eyeball, the, ball, the actual little bags underneath the eyeball itself, all the mouth. Everything's broken up into individual sections. Now... If you've got a single piece and you're going to weight your bones afterwards, that's perfectly fine. I, I'm not going to bother right now. I'm keeping it really simple. This is just for demonstration purposes. However, a game in this style could absolutely work. All right, guys, let's start off really, really simple here. Let's take a look what I've got. I've got myself a, at the top, I've got myself one bone. It's the root bone. It came in with spine. As default, it comes in called root. It's underneath my skeleton. I've got my skeleton right here and a single bone. This bone is in charge of everything in my scene. Right now, mine is right down here in the lower left-hand corner. That's because in Photoshop, I left it like that. You could have set this up originally in Photoshop, so you don't have to do this step. But if you didn't, it's really easy to move this bone. What I want to do is physically move this bone right here onto the characters, right underneath the character's feet. That's all I want to do. And I'm going to do so by simply turning on. In this case here, I'm just going to turn on the images uh, compensation or the compensate button. I don't have any bones underneath it. And what I do when I put it in translate mode, I'm currently in setup. In translate mode, I can actually grab this bone without actually physically affecting in any way the underlying images. So I'm just going to drop this bone right there. That's really, really good. And I'm going to turn off the compensation button now. Boop. There we go. Now, the root itself, I'm going to rename right away to, let's call this instead root, or let's call it scene root. That's what we'll call it, scene root. It's going to be the root of our entire scene, all right? And what I'm going to do right now is just go back to my translate. It originally was at 0, 0, 0, and I'm going to put it back there, 0 and 0. And when I do, you can see my character has now jumped to the origin, which is great. The reason why I want to do this is it's it's going to act as the, this this line right here on the grid is going to act as a ground for me. So later on when I'm animating, I'm going to say, oh yeah, I see exactly where that character is in relation to the ground. So it's going to work out really, really well. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is add a bone that's going to be my central bone for my character. It's going to be in charge of the entire character's root structure. The entire character is going to move based on this bone. So with my scene root selected, I'm going to go down to create. And I'm going to add a brand new null, and I'm just going to add it, let's say I add it right here in the center of his belt. That's probably a really good spot for it. So boom, right there in the center of his belt. And I'm going to once again, right away, rename this to, let's call it character root. So that's going to be the root of my character. Now what I want to do now is start building my bones off of this. I'm going to have upper and lower body bones. Let's start with the upper body. With my root character selected. I'm going to draw a bone that's going to go from my midpoint. I'm going to pick a point where I'm going to, I know I'm going to rotate my character around. This is really my pivot point. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag it up to about the neck area, just like this. Now, this is going to be my character's spine. I'm just going to call this, I'm going to call this bone my um, upper torso underscore BN. Now, I've only got one bone in there. For the entire torso and that's perfectly fine for the animation i'm doing if you wanted to add several different bones in here to allow yourself to build kind of a c shape in your character that's fine but i'm not going to if you're thinking if you're thinking about anatomy the way our actual spine works almost like you know 90 percent or 98 percent or some number i'm going to make up <laughs> some large number amount is going to be 
and the lower spine is in charge of most of the bending in our spine, like your, your lower portion of your spine. The upper portion of our spine uh, is, is supporting the rib cage. The rib cage is this solid structure that's protecting our innards, and there's not a lot of flexibility. There's some flexibility in there, but not a lot of bending actually occurs uh, within that particular structure. Most of the bending actually occurs in the lower spine. So I'm just going to leave it like this and have my character be able to bend at, at that position. And I'm going to call it upper torso, and I spelled it totally wrong. I called it unpepper. Let's call it upper, upper torso, BN. And the reason why I called it BN, it's going to be a bind joint. Now, this is something we do in 3D. We often call our joints that we create either BX when they have no mesh associated with them or BN when they have a mesh, mesh associated with them directly. Like if it's a bind, if it's bound to, the mesh is bound to a particular bone, we call it a BN, uh, BN joint. So we're doing the same thing here in 2D. I'm actually going to grab some stuff right now. Let me grab the belly. So I'm going to move my belly down here into the upper torso. And I'm also going to grab my chest, my chest right here, the chest. And I'm going to drag it and drop it onto the upper torso. So now my upper torso is in charge of moving around both the belly and the chest. All right. With my upper torso once again selected, I'm going to go back to create. And I'm going to add a head bone. So right about here is where I want my, my neck to actually pivot. And I'm just going to add this like this. It's just for visual purposes. It doesn't really serve a whole huge purpose to have this long bone. It's strictly for visual purposes for me. Okay. And I'm again going to rename this bone. Let's rename this bone to our head underscore BN. Great. And with our head, we're going to add a bunch of different things to it. I'm going to add the base helmet, which is actually this character's head. I didn't rename it. I'm going to add the base helmet. I'm going to add this bag and bag. Those are the eye bags. I'm going to add the brain. I'm going to add the... I'm not going to add the eyes for now. I'm going to add the mouth, the nose, the scar. And I think that's about it. I'm going to drag all those things. So I just, I just control selected them. I'm going to drag them all into the head BN. Now you're saying, okay, why didn't you add the eyes? I'm going to add separate bones for the eyes. And I'm going to add those directly to the the head bone that I just created, head bone right there. I'm going to go back to create, and I'm going to add an, a bone right here in the center of this eye. Uh, just as a null like that, that's perfectly fine. And I'm going to add another one back on the head bone right in the center of this eye. Now, the reason why I'm doing this, I'm making these separate bones, and they're still following the head, they're children of the head, is they're going to allow me to have some overlapping action and create eye rolls or whatever else I want to do. So if you've got yourself something, maybe you've got yourself some you know, plumage and, or you've got some crazy hair or whatever, you might want to go in and add yourself some bones onto your particular character. Now, I'm going to rename these bones right away. So this first one was called, I'm going to call it, uh, I'm going to call this my, uh, my eye underscore R, because it's my right hand eye, underscore BN. And the other one I'm going to add, I'm going to call my I underscore L underscore BN. Perfect. Both those are renamed. I'm going to grab myself my right hand eye. Here's my eye right. Drag it onto my eye right. Here's my eye left is right here. Drag it onto my eye left and we can keep moving on. Now, once again, I want to add some bones to my upper torso. I'm going to go right in right now and add the, the arm bones. So let's grab our upper torso right here. Go back to create. And once again, I'm going to click. I'm going to start off there with the right arm. I'm going to click where I want the shoulder to pivot. So right about this location. And I'm going to drag it down to about the location I want the elbow to, to pivot. I'm going to drag it and then make another one to where I want the wrist to pivot. Let's say right there. And lastly, my hand pivot point. There we go. So I've got myself three bones that I'm going to rename to. I'll call this one here shoulder underscore R underscore BN. The next one I'm going to rename elbow, elbow underscore R underscore BN. And the very last one I'm going to rename a hand, hand underscore R underscore BN. Great. And once again, we'll drag everything we want down there. There's actually a quick way of doing this automatically uh, where you don't have to drag it all down. I'm just doing this manually. I'm just being lazy, to be honest. Let's grab our arm right and drag it and drop it off on the shoulder BN. Let's grab our elbow, 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 right, and drag it onto the elbow BN. And lastly, we're going to grab our hand right and drag it onto our hand BN. Awesome. Now, I want you guys to take a second and do the exact same thing with the left hand hand the left hand arm. All right. I'll be back as soon as mine is done. Okay, guys, I'm finished up here. I've got myself my shoulder BN, my elbow BN, and my, my uh, hand left BN. And underneath each of those, I have the appropriate, uh, the appropriate images. All right. So, so far, so good. We've got ourselves our entire upper body done. That's where I'm going to leave our upper body for now. 
let's go back to our character root. And what I'd like to do is the exact same thing with the lower body. We're going to start off by drive, by creating a simple bone. I'm going to go to create. And I'm going to create right about from the area where I want this character to rotate. So maybe right from about here. And I'm going to drag it down. This is my character's uh, pelvis bone. All right, let's rename this pelvis. Pelvis. And this is actually pelvis BN because I'm actually going to put things on top of it. On my pelvis for my particular character, I've got my pants broken up into three different sections into each leg and this middle part. So I'm going to grab my pants middle and drag that and drop it on the pelvis BN. Also on my pelvis BN, I'm going to find my belt and I'm going to drag and drop my belt. I want that belt to swivel along with the pelvis. Awesome. Now let's go through and create our leg. I'm going to grab my pelvis BN once again in create mode. Let's go ahead and make our right hand leg. I'm going to make a, a a hip joint right here at about the place where I think that my hip should pivot. I'm going to go down to the knee. I'm going to go down from the knee to the ankle pivot. From the ankle, I'm going to go to the ball of the foot. And from the ball of the foot, I'm going to go across like this. All right, so I've kind of got this, this zigzag shape. And let's rename those. The first one's going to be called our hips underscore R underscore BN. Our next one's going to be called our knee underscore Oops, so I spelled that wrong. Our knee underscore R underscore BN. Next is going to be our ankle, ankle underscore BN, sorry, underscore R underscore BN. And lastly, we're going to call this one our ball, B A L L underscore R underscore BN. All right, each of these are bind joints. I'm going to grab my. Let me see, it's at the top here. I'm going to grab my ankle R and drop it off on the ankle. I'm going to grab my ball R and drop it off on the ball. I'm going to grab my shin R and drop it off. I should have named these all the same. <laughs> drop it off on my knee. And lastly, my thigh R, which is actually my hips. Okay, drop that off on my hips. Perfect. Now, if you'll notice right now, if I move that hip around, let me just go to animate for a second. I like to do an animate better. If I grab this actual joint right here and I rotate it, you can see that the leg is moving independently of the pants. All right. And, and I kind of want that. I do want that, but I don't want it to not be moved at all. So I'm going to go to my hips R underscore BN and I'm going to say create. And I'm going to make myself another joint that's just going to be for creating overlapping action in the pants. I'm just going to add it like that. And I'll rename this to pants underscore r underscore bn and onto that i will drag my pants right now if we take a look if i go back to animate for a second here if i grab onto my hip and i rotate it the pants are moving along but i can still create overlapping action in my pants bing dong ding dong ding dong all right so we can do all that so that's pretty awesome let's go back here now what i want you guys to do is the exact same thing for the left hand side okay I'll see you guys in one second. Okay, guys, I am back, and there we go. We've got ourselves our left and our right-hand side done for the entire body, all right? And let's just test this stuff out to see how it works. If we start off with our pelvis, let's test. I'm going to go to animate mode to do this. Uh, let's start off with our pelvis, and let's go into rotation. The pelvis should all swing like this. It's all swinging by itself, which is awesome. I can move that independent from the upper body. If I grab the actual character root and we rotate that, for example, the entire thing moves. We're leaving our frame behind, which is what we want. If we go into our hips, each individual hip is going to move the body around. So you can see that I'm getting the, the movement right there in the leg. I can move the knee separately. Oops, that's the thigh still. Let's go to our knee. Excuse me, right there. Bang, 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 bang. I'm moving my knee. I can move my ankle. Great. And lastly, I can move my ball or my toes. Great. Let's go to the upper body now because those are all working. Let's go to the upper body. Our upper torso should bend the entire upper body and it does. Everything is moving together, which is great. Let's back up a little bit here so we can see it. Our head is going to, oops, I grabbed the wrong thing again. Let's go to our head, our head BN. Move our head around. Yes, 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 yes. Actually, this should not be in, in behind the chest like that. That should be in front of the chest. We're going to take a look at how to fix that because you can see that parts of it are and parts of it are not. So we'll take a look at how to fix that in one second. Uh, let's go in here. We can see everything moving properly. We can move individual eyes by moving this. So there we go. I can move my eye around. And anytime, like I don't really like that. That's not the best position. If I rotate that, you can see it's not really rotating around the, the center of the eye. If I really wanted to, if I wanted to move it, I could go back to my setup. I could turn on my, my 
compensate both the image and the bones, and I can move that bone wherever I really wanted it. So you're not stuck with whatever you've got set up here. So that looks good. Let's test out one of the arms. Let's find ourselves an arm. Right here, our shoulder. Bang, 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 bang. Good work. He's walking along. Our elbow. That's Why do I keep grabbing the wrong thing? Our elbow. Our elbow BN. Uh-oh. Is that set up? Oh, this is set up wrong. Is it set up wrong? Elbow BN. There we go. No, there we go. Our elbow BN. That's working. Ah, oh, zombie broken arm. All right, perfect. And lastly, our hand. Let's check out our hand. Our hand is also working. All right, so that's working exactly like we want it to. Let's go back here into setup for a minute. Now, a couple things. I didn't like the head. The head itself is in the wrong spot. The head should be above the chest. To change the draw order of something, all you have to do is find the area where it says draw order, expand it, and find what you want to move. In this particular situation, I want to make sure that my head, let's find it, it was called base helmet, is above our chest. And right now you can see how it's below the chest and the belly. So I'm going to grab this. I'm going to move it up so it is above. I'm going to put it right up here on the top. It's going to be behind the eyes and behind the bag, but right there. All right. Now, if I go back to animate for a second and I grab my head bone and I rotate it, you can now see my zombie's head is in front. So I guess it all depends on how you want the neck to work. That looks perfectly fine to me. I'm going to leave it like that. Okay. Pretty awesome. Let's get out of here. There's only one more thing I want to show you in this episode. The last thing I want to show you. Now, in animation, you saw that right now all my bones are gray. They all look exactly the same. And if we start swinging our bones around, we're going to actually have a more difficult time identifying what's what, right? It's going to be more difficult to tell exactly what's what when all the bones are moving around. So what I want to do, I'm going to go in and I'm going to, let's, let's find our left-hand side. So I'm going to go over to my, start with my left shoulder, and I'm going to select it. I'm going to click select my elbow, my hand. Uh, I'm going to go down, or I'm going to find the leg as well, my left-hand side leg, my leg, my knee, my ankle, my ball, and the pants as well. So I've selected, oh, I missed the shin. Where's our shin? Right there, our knee bone. Great. So I've selected all the bones, and you can see how they're blue right now. They're all blue inside of this inside of this image, which is awesome, but that doesn't really help me when I'm animating. This might get all confusing later on. If you look in your tree, you go down to the bottom, you're going to see something that says color. I'm going to go in there, I'm going to click it, and I'm going to choose myself a color. I'm going to choose, let's choose blue for now. Let's go way up here in the corner for a nice dark blue, and I'm going to say OK. And when I do, you can see that my bones have all turned blue. All of my left-hand bones are blue. I didn't change the eye. You can do that if you want to. But all of my left-hand side are blue, which is great. Now I can easily identify these if they're swinging back and forth. I'm going to do the exact same thing again with the right-hand side. So let me go to the right-hand side. Let me find my, my hips and my knee and my ankle and my ball and my pants and my, not my head. Let's skip that. Let's grab our shoulder and our elbow and our hand. I've selected them all on that side. Once again, I'll go to color. And I'm going to make this into, let's make it into a purple. All right, let's make it into a kind of a pinky purple. There we go. Okay, take a look now. Easily identified. We can easily identify this. I'm not going to bother changing the, the head or the, the upper body or the, the pelvis. Those are all fine. I will go through and change the color, though, of this little torso, sorry, of, of our character root, because that's an important one. I'm going to change that to, let's make it into a bright red. Let's make it into a bright red. Boom. Just like that. Now I can easily see all of my bones. This is perfect for me, exactly what I want. We've got ourselves a good, clean FK skeleton. All right, guys, I hope you enjoyed that episode. I hope you're going to start animating now. Start animating your guy in FK. Next episode, we're going to talk about IK and some of the, some of the benefits of IK over FK or FK over IK. All right, guys, thumbs up, thumbs down, comments down below. And if you haven't done so, please take a few seconds to subscribe. Have yourselves a wonderful day, everyone.